Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Duke Dang. I'm the general manager of Works and Process, the performing arts series at the Guggenheim. And we're here at the Bridge Street Theater, where we have a Works and Process bubble residency with Passion Fruit Dance Company. Now, it is April 10th right now. We're going to get to go behind the scenes, see the creative process of this incredible street dance, club dance, hip hop company. And then tomorrow on the last day of the bubble residency, this company will premiere this brand new piece called Trapped in the Rotunda of the Guggenheim. So thank you so much for joining us. We're going to see a first piece called Cocoon and then the cast members will join us in a moderated discussion. Now, before we dive into the performance, it's important for me to thank our funders, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, as well as the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation for supporting this initiative. Without their support, this wouldn't be happening. Thank you so much for joining us, and um, let's welcome Passion Fruit Dance Company with Trapped.
Wow, that was incredible. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to welcome Tatiana Desarduin, Miley Ho, and Lorianne O'Gay. Now, we just saw a piece called Cocoon, and I couldn't help but notice that you are in costumes that are red that look like a cocoon. So can you tell us more about Cocoon? Yes, so first, thank you. <laughs> so uh, about the Cocoon, this idea of being trapped uh, surrounded by that cocoon is supposed to represent all the social construct, our struggle that lies on us and we try to get away, we try to get rid of it, fight in all those troubles that we have. So this is basically just a metaphor of uh, all the social uh, struggle that we go through as women in this society. So we, I wanted to play with this idea and showcase this idea of like try to remove ourselves from it, uh, finding a way out. So Lorianne and Maile, when Tatiana had this idea of dancing inside a cocoon, what was your reaction? <laughs> like this. And how was it to dance inside a cocoon? So um, Tatiana always has like a, a lot of ideas. And the first time that she says it, like we, we look at each other, we're like, <clears throat> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but then it's fine. I mean, uh, of course, it's challenging because you cannot see and you can lose uh, uh, the track uh, pretty easily. But then it's it's a good challenge. I really like it. Thank you. Um, I think it's a great representation, and we do feel trapped, and we have no view to the outside world. So. It does feel a little enclosing, and we feel tiny, and we do want to come out, and we're okay, I'm breathing out now. So um, we're trying to really embody that. Um, and I think that idea, you know, it's like a double skin. It's a great metaphor for human struggle. Like, we all have them. And so how do we find ways? Can, can I find this way? Can I find that way? Can I, you know, and we each have our own. Yep. Now let's take it back a level. Um, Tatiana, can you tell us about Trapped? So why Trapped? Um, 
because a lot of time this is how I felt. First of all, there's that pandemic happening. So of course that was like the, the start of um, this idea. But also as women, um, specifically myself as being a black woman, um, a lot of stuff has been happening lately uh, as far as this awakening, but also to understand how deep um, it is for people who's not living our reality as a black woman to understand what it is to function and navigate uh, in this world period, whether it's here, whether it's Switzerland, wherever we go. So for me, that was the starting point. And uh, as we have deep conversations all the time, you know, uh, since we are friends, um, we notice as we're talking, we have similarities uh, inside our struggles, just as us being women. Um, and I feel like it was a, a good challenge for me to be a little bit more personal. I'm usually not that personal within my piece. Um, I like to talk about specific things, but that ne ne doesn't necessarily involve me to be that vulnerable. But this time I use basically the conversations that we have between friends, uh, even with the other dancers from the cast who are also friends and cl close friends where we have all those conversations where okay, there's definitely connections between us, similarities, differences that we can play with as us being women, period. So for me, I felt like that was an amazing way to challenge myself and be like, okay, let's be more vulnerable this time. Let me share a little bit more about my story, my struggle as a woman, and also their struggle and how it's all intertwined. Right, so as I mentioned before, we are in the middle of a bubble residency. And what that means is that before these artists are able to safely gather. They go through a period of self-isolation at home combined with multiple rounds of rapid testing before they enter the bubble where they can safely create together again. So it's two weeks now inside the bubble. You talk about having conversations and being together. How is it to have this time, two weeks to work together, create together, to live together, to cook together, to eat together? <laughs> I'll start then I'll let you speak on that but first <laughs> really amazing for us like we we don't get to see each other that much because of this situation it's so the pandemic still. it's the pandemic so right now it was an amazing opportunity to be together every day uh, and we missed social connections contact and then we feed on that a lot within our dance styles within the culture within what we do in our art so definitely I think it was uh, perfect to develop this specific piece and the theme, you know, to be back in connection with people close to each other so we could go more in depth to have those conversations, but just feel each other and feed off each other. Um, so no, it's amazing, challenging, because it's only two weeks to try to create a, a nice, strong <laughs> 30 minutes piece. Um, and I love that challenge. Uh, but yeah, it definitely was intense every day from morning till night, late night, nonstop work. So yeah. And you were leading the charge. How was it for you as company members to be in this bubble? Same. It felt very healing, um, very uplifting to, to see old friends and to connect better with new ones. I mean, not new, new, but just to connect better and deeper. And also we just coming out, not yet out, but we're just coming slowly out of a year, you know, completely in isolation, everyone. So we've also had a time to, um, we were forced to be in solitude and to really confront our own, you know, struggles and fears and doubts and, just all these emotions and now we're coming back and we're bringing it all together, um, putting it on the floor, sharing. Uh, so there were some really interesting conversations and I think we'll see that evolve as the piece evolve as well. Great. So excited for that as well. So you talk about how this piece is about the story of women and your experience and I'm so proud and excited that Works in Process was able to provide a bubble residency earlier this year for the ladies of hip-hop mm -hmm. 
which um, Tatiana is a part of. And uh, you'll see Latasha Barnes, as well as Nubian Nene, who are also part of Ladies of Hip Hop. And so there is a theme of women in hip hop and how women traditionally have not been fairly represented in hip hop culture. Is that fair of me to say? Yes. Yes. So I assume it's a deliberate decision to have an all-female company. <laughs> so as far as the piece, yes. Yes. But as far as being just an all-female company, no. The starting point was really friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, it could have been men, but it happens to be it's them that I'm connected the most since I moved here. So um, I work with the people where I feel connected to artistically and that are willing to dive into my world, basically, where it's easygoing. And also, I'm, I'm, for me, it's really important to work with people that I really know mm -hmm. or that I had a connection somehow, if I don't know you that much for so long, but there's something there that I feel connected to that I want to uh, that I'm interesting to work with. So it was, it was not this idea of being, oh, let's be all female cast. But definitely for me to be a female choreographer within uh, those styles, within this culture, is definitely something that's important for me that I keep in mind in my work, but also in just as far as I know what I represent by doing this. And it's important to emphasize that idea of being a black choreographer period um, and that's coming from the street and club culture right. uh, because it's not as much represented and also to offer a different point of view um, narrative of what we usually see when it comes to street and club dance on stage very commercial right. and offer like just a little bit more um, just a wider range of what we can do or what we really are you know, open people's minds. Uh, right. I'm so glad you mentioned that because usually when most people think of hip hop culture, it is to sell, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a commercialized version of hip hop culture and it's usually in shorter sequences, but you actually have a concert dance piece that is grounded in hip hop culture. This piece will be 30 minutes, is that yes. right? And uh, so what are you trying to convey? So uh, I'm, I really, like I was saying, I really want people to be curious a little bit more about what it is really more in depth. You know, like, okay, whatever you see on the social media or whatever you see uh, on TV, uh, it's probably like 5% of what this culture represents. And what we try to offer here is like, okay, this is what we do of, uh, for our life. Every day, this is what we live, this is what we breathe, and there's a way more to that, like, flashy things that's, that is used to sell. There's a whole journey that each one of us represents in a different way, you know, that this idea of identity um, and speaking your truth is very, very important within our culture, and this is something that is not enough represented that I feel compelled by uh, pushing forward and understand the subtleties inside, um, the intricacy, the intelligence, you know, the math. Right. Uh, there's a lot that people don't get to really know and we're trying to do that. Right. On stage. So one more question before we go into our next excerpt. Um, so when I think of hip hop culture as a New Yorker, it's something that uh, was created in the Bronx. Right. Very American. Right. You're Haitian Swiss. Myla, you're from France. Lorianne, you're from Switzerland. So how did you come to hip hop? I mean, the vibrations of this culture is so powerful. It's so worldwide. It's worldwide now. I mean, it started definitely in the Bronx and it was, it's, I feel like it's so, the reason why of this culture, uh, of the emergence of this culture is so powerful that it resonates and vibrates super far that you can find uh, people doing those dance styles everywhere. So of course it was gonna vibrate until Switzerland, until France. Um, and each one of us ha found their own reasons of why we felt compelled to it and how we found our way to speak our truth in it because actually about this culture is about speaking, like I was saying, our truth, but also the truth about black people 
within this culture, what we go through, what is our everyday life, uh, what is our history, what is our ancestors' history, and what is our today story. Um, so I feel like um, this is so deep, so powerful, that I'm not surprised that we, we all got touched for it and found in it some tools to heal ourselves uh, in, uh, at the same time. Oh, and boy, do we need healing right now. Yes, we do. <laughs> so can you tell us what we're going to see next and what we should be looking for? So we're about to see this section called Conversation. Um, and it's about friendship. Uh, what we do is the conversation for me, it's one way we found to heal ourselves, support each other. Um, and towards our journey, some of us uh, found ourselves like having, I would say, struggle opening up at times. And I feel like it's something that uh, really did help me personally, uh, being able to find those right friends that knows me, knows how to open me up help me to, get, to go to that phase of conversation to heal, basically. And I feel like it's a powerful tool to, for healing the, the conversation moment, he unlock a lot of th uh, stuff. So I really, I really wanted to play with that idea during this section. Great, thank you so much. And now we have conversation from Trapped.
Welcome back. That was conversation, and now we're going to have a conversation. But I'd like to welcome Latasha Barnes, Sue, Nubian Nene, and、uh, well, we know Tatiana.、Um, so we just saw conversation. The next piece that we're going to see is called Fight. Is that right? So yes, yes. Fight. So can you talk a little bit about Fight? The fight. So the inspiration for it was Laurie and Aga actually,、um, because she has an interesting way of dealing <laughs> with situations, and one of her way of doing it is actually to fight.、Um, I mean, fight peaceful way, like not really fight. <laughs> But she loves boxing, martial arts. She's really attracted to that, and for her, it's a nice way to release, release stress, release anything. So I had the chance to experience a boxing class with her、uh, during a class, and I was just so amazed by the way she transforms、uh, when she does it, and the change that happens、uh, in her after. And we spoke about it a lot: how she feels whenever she gets to do、um, boxing, and the need that she has、uh, by practicing、uh, martial arts. So that was really the starting point, and then from there. Uh, I decided to create to create movement around that idea,、uh, and develop this idea of fighting our struggle away,、uh, whatever problems that we have, and again as a metaphor. Right. So Latasha, Sue, Nene, how was it to be in this piece, to create this piece, to perform this piece?、Um, so. It's pretty. It was pretty interesting in the sense of realizing how we all have different ways to fight our demons, right? And to utilize different tools. And as Tatiana said, like、uh, Lorianne, that's her way. That's one of her ways of being able to to do that. And just the idea. We had a great conversation while we were creating the piece, where it was、uh, the power of being able to even just do shadow boxing. But even though we're not really fighting anyone, we're just, you know, like, but we're still utilizing the muscles, and we're still really having to engage part of our, our bodies, and also realizing how much, even if we're dancers, this is a whole new choreography world, you know, if if I may say.、Um, but at the same time, the I felt empowered by the idea, even though I'm probably not the best. You know, I don't give the best punches yet. <laughs>、um, if for me it was just the idea to be able to channel that energy into these type of movements, and also the beautiful connection that Tatiana and Lorian created in terms of the mix of dance and boxing, you know, and how we found that groove. We always find that groove within the box and the boxing, and and、um, and I think. You know, if you've watched boxing or if you've watched fighting in any type of martial art, there's always that type of flow. There's always a rhythm,、mm-hmm. and then to be able to kind of like、um, see or feel the similarities, but see the feel the differences also, but just be able to express that. That was pretty fun. Yeah. So Sue, you're from South Korea. Yes. And. How did you find your way to street dance and hip hop? <laughs> I was thinking about the fight. <laughs> oh, sorry. Now, sorry. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh.、Uh. <laughs> Do you need、I'm、a moment? I'm not an American, so okay. I need a minute.、Uh, what, what, I'm sorry. What was the? So you're from South Korea, right? Hip hop is, you know, a very American、yes. culture art form. It's、mm. worldwide now. But how did you find your way to hip hop、uh, and street、uh, dance? And I don't know. It was just、uh, when I was a kid. I was just、uh, naturally I like to dance and I listen to music. And then I very naturally like find the music. And then oh, oh this is it. In back then there was no internet, so it was. It was a yeah. It was a lot of time to to find the what what is this, what is that. But finally, I、uh, found、uh, hip hop culture and the hip hop dance, and then I got to really、uh, into it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was was it what brought you to New York?、Uh, I, I don't know. I just、uh, one day I just decided to okay, I gotta go somewhere.、Um, 
the dance culture. So I just decided one day, okay, I'm leaving Korea, and then I want to learn all these different dance style from uh, this center, this center. So that's that was the start. Yeah. Then I really liked to New York, so I decided to work in in starting uh, all this work in New York. Yeah. So Latasha, I'm going to ask you a question that I've asked you before. Okay. Um, you know, it's been a rough year. We are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, what do artists need right now? Oh, I thought yours was heavy. Um, well, yeah, you have asked me this question a few yeah. times. And, and we, need, we all need to hear this. Yeah. One of the biggest things that's coming uh, to light for me now is the need to have space to share, to create, to build um, without the transactional expectation. So without the requirement of having to produce a show. If a show develops, then that's great. If seeds for, borrowing from passion fruit seeds, if seeds for a new adventure or new collaborations develop, then that's fantastic. But um, for presenters and educators to start to make space for artists to recognize and realize their value as humans, as artists, not necessarily just these producers of mm -hmm. art. Um, for us to have that space to actually really value ourselves is a big vulnerability for us too because a lot of us have gotten used to, okay, we have this space, now we have to create, we have to do a thing and we have to perform it. And to even make space for ourselves to step back from that idea, mm -hmm. to be able to, to shift the culture uh, quite a bit right. so that we can make more space to honor each other in our growing process, I think is absolutely invaluable. And of course, having the money to do that doesn't hurt. <laughs> Just saying. But we have people have tuning space. in that need to hear that. <laughs> but to have the space, honestly, um, and the time and the use of, of systems, um, not in the, say, industrialized or negatively systematized way, but you know, for those of us to come together who found ways of creating like amazing, you know, academic approaches to sharing our process, not for it to be cannibalized by others who kind of think they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. but to actually take time to discover how you can be assistive to the culture, not just a taker and not just commercializing it. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so tomorrow, this piece premieres. Now I feel really guilty because we've been so uh, focused on making live in-person performances happen again. <laughs> but um, what are you, what is going through your mind as you get to be one of the first dance companies to perform in front of a live audience indoors in over a year. <laughs> We've got people with hands up. <laughs> yes, so uh, a lot of pressure, of course, but a, a lot of excitement as well. We're super excited to perform, super grateful to be able to do it. None of us had, ex had any expectations of performing this year, last year, like, we had no idea we were going to do that this year. So for us, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to do it and uh, to be productive, creative again, to move, you know, with a, with a specific purpose and just to have a, an audience. We're doing that also to share with people. So um, I, feel, I feel a lot of fear, of course. <laughs> it's almost like I, I forgot how it feels to perform in front of people. Mm -hmm. So we all feel like babies right now a little bit. <laughs> like, okay, wow, is it the first time I'm going to perform? I've done <laughs> this all my life. But it doesn't feel like it feels like pretty like, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> we haven't done that for a while. So, like, really, really grateful and excited. But, yeah, definitely the pressure is real. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing with us your thoughts, your insights, your artistry, your performance. Um, and before we go into um, fight, I want to thank you, thank the company. Thank um, I want to thank Bridge Street Theater. Um, and of course, we thank couldn't you. have done this without the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation. And for those of you that are actually tuning in, 
right now, tonight, um, April 10th, you can buy tickets to a live in-person performance that's happening tomorrow night, April 11th, um, in the rotunda of the Guggenheim as part of the Works and Process series. Uh, for more information, you can visit www.worksandprocess.org. Again, thank you so much. And now we're going to close out this program with Fight from Trapped by Passion Fruit Dance Company. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.